Hi guys, welcome to episode two of Origins of Doggos. This week is a very special week. We're going to be talking about the Afghan Hound. And as you know, every week we're going to be going through A through Z, talking about the different breeds from a historical perspective. So this week is really special. I love Afghan Hounds. I love any dog with the dolicocephalic heads, these nice pointed heads, and these these this, all the sight hounds with their with their just beautiful long flowing bodies. Uh, but this is really interesting because the Afghan Hound is one of the most ancient breeds in the world. You would think, if you look at them so stylized, so elegant, that they are bred down to be specifically like that. They were, but they've been around forever. Uh, so originally, there, there's even cave paintings from Afghanistan of these dogs. They, they did a genetic test. They think they've been around for thousands of years. They also know that they are a basal breed, meaning one of, their, one of the 14 or so originating breeds that predate all the modern breeds, including Borzois. So it's really crazy. They originated in the mountainous regions of Afghanistan. They have these really interesting bodies. They had to sneak up on prey. They're hyper agile. They have these really cool scent glands still in their mouths. That's why they call, um, they're called the scented hound some places. They, you know, they're about the size of a borzoi, a little bit smaller, 25 to 27 inches. They only get up to about 60 pounds. They're highly intelligent. They're very, 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 their temperament is very, very, very kingly, and they are known as the king of the dog. So we know that they have this long fur, and this is meant to, you can imagine being in the mountains of Afghanistan, you have to have an incredibly warm coat. This is where this long, this long padded hair comes from. So they really were bred to hunt in this, this crazy, rocky, tough environment. And since they were, they were bred with the nomadic tribes of Afghanistan, they really didn't they really did not come into pop popularity for a long time. It wasn't until about 1907 when a guy named Captain Bariff brought a dog named Zarden to the UK that the, that, the, that the the fanfare really hit. This dog became the, you know, the paradigm of the breed and sent shockwaves. I mean, could you imagine first seeing these dogs? There was rumors of it. There was, there was one description one drawing done earlier by a man named Thomas Dewar Broughton in 1809, but this dog was a rumor. They didn't really understand or, or they didn't really believe where it came from. So Zarden really changed all that. And he made it so the breed was well known throughout uh, throughout Europe, became a staple in the kennel clubs. I mean, I'm sure that if you're running a dog show or you want to, you, you're starting, you know, dog shows are becoming a business. I could only imagine. These are these are an incredible spectacle, and they will draw attention. I think from anybody. 1912, Zarden uh, brings the breed to Europe, and it starts to spread throughout Europe. It's not until 1926, however, that it comes over over from Europe and comes to the United States and is admitted by the AKC. The breed doesn't immediately take off, which is kind of shocking to me. I expected um, something so amazing to just explode but it really wasn't until the 40s or so that it really got its uh its its foothold 1945 november 26 1945 we see that the afghan hound is actually on the cover of life magazine uh, it doesn't win its first westminster until 1957 but at the same time we're finding that picasso is now jumping into this arena and has of his prized afghan hound cabal so the it's starting to permeate the you know it's starting to permeate the the zeitgeist here in America, and it it, it is it reaches its peak in 1970 when Barbie comes out and her dog is the Afghan, and you can actually see the explosion in popularity in America with the Afghan hound being now with with <laughs> sold as a Barbie toy. I mean, these are pretty incredible. It's funny I talked to somebody at work, and they actually had uh, a Barbie Afghan hound, so. These are still out there. I, I'm gonna check eBay, and I'm sure I'm sure I'll be able to find them. So again, 1983. Now uh, we're coming up to modern history, and the Afghan Hound won again uh, in Westminster. So it's pretty an incredible breed. You think back; it, it predates a modern society. They actually some rumors that the dog itself was the dog on Noah's Ark, which is just so cool. So cave paintings, the mountains of Afghanistan. An obscure nomadic hunting dog used to hunt in the snow with lavish, crazy fur ends up being on the cover of Life magazine and one of Picasso's favorite subjects. Just crazy.
Thanks, guys. Come back next week. I think we're doing the Airedale next week. A lot of history there. So see you soon.